Hi everyone, Terrell here, and I wanted to say Happy Halloween. I hope you guys are having a great time. I hope you are all eating tons of uh, candy and nice snacks, and you're enjoying the holiday season, watching some scary movies, and hanging out with uh, family and friends. So, uh, I hope you liked my Halloween costume. Uh, I thought it'd be a, a fun one to to be Phalanx guy for Halloween, and um, yeah, I just wanted to have a chat about uh, horror in uh, Silver Falls and sort of uh, my thought process behind uh, what I thought would be an interesting way to do horror in Silver Falls. So um, oh, and before we get started, I just want to say that we've wrapped up the uh, Halloween giveaway. So congratulations to everyone who has won a copy uh, of Silver Falls Episode Prelude. I hope you guys enjoy the game. And if you are new to Silver Falls, I hope you'll check out the other games as well. We also have a Game Boy game, which you can download for free. Get the ROM from our website. You can play it any way you like. And uh, that's the full game, totally free. And it's a, a fully canonical game. It's not like a little spin-off. It's a full-sized game. And we have Frontier Fighters Mini. So if you haven't had the chance to uh, play Three Down Stars on the new Nintendo 3DS, uh, you can play Frontier Fighters Mini, and you can get a feel for the characters and the story uh, of that game and it um yeah so you don't feel uh, too left out uh, on missing three down stars because i know not everyone has a new nintendo 3ds so not everyone has a chance to play that game but you still can meet the characters in frontier fighters mini you can play it on windows uh, mac android uh, a whole bunch of other consoles i've included a package which lets you play the game on a bunch of consoles so you can enjoy that it's an rpg and it's got a bunch of different playable characters and a bunch of different skills and weapons and just a bit of good fun. So uh, my approach with horror, and I, I want to talk specifically about Three Down Stars, as that's the first game uh, in the series, is I wanted to take a a more, uh, I suppose at this point, a vintage approach when it comes to horror, in that you see vintage uh, horror movies, say for example, John Carpenter's Halloween, where there's a long setup and it establishes a sense of normalcy. Um, something, uh, an issue that I have with um, horror games and horror movies is when right out the gate the, the movie is just throwing non-stop jump scares at you and, oh, here's the scary violin sound. Ooh, oh no, it, it's drowned out, now it's quiet, get ready for a jump scare. And, and, you know, things are constantly popping out at the audience. And there's this uh, hyper-stylized st sense of... Um, action and i don't think that's very scary at all i think it it's exhausting um because the audience and the viewer never get a chance to uh breathe and they never get a chance to see what the world is supposed to be like what these people's lives are supposed to be like uh, i think a, a great example again is john carpenter's halloween where it, there's a long setup you get an idea of the world what's normal you establish normalcy you establish the lives of the character in Alien, you get a very good, clear idea of what these characters' lives are supposed to be like. To us, being in outer space is not normal. It's crazy, you know? Wow, they're living and working in space. But the movie takes its time to set up the normal lives of these characters that it feels normal. You can understand, okay, this is just work for them. It's just a job. And so with Three Down Stars, I wanted to take that approach in that the game feels like it's going to be pretty normal and not really have many scary elements, so I'm probably going to get into a little bit of some spoiler territory. So if you uh, plan on playing Three Down Stars in the future, because we will be doing a, a uh, remake for the Nintendo Switch, then I recommend um, treading carefully here. Maybe, I don't know, skip ahead to, to <laughs> some other point in the video, but um, for those who are familiar with Three Down Stars, uh, there'll be a bit, bit of spoilers here. So you're playing uh, most of the game, um, well, the entirety of the game up up um, through the uh, prologue and then the introduction chapters, you play as um, Holt, then Annalise, and Moss. And there isn't really anything scary going on. It, it establishes what's supposed to be normal in the world, and it shows the characters' reactions to things that aren't normal. And I wanted to build a sense of escalation so the player uh, organically has an expectation of, oh, okay, well, this is what's normal. This is what's happening that's not normal. So the player understands 
and expects something and they expect, okay, if this is the worst that's going to happen, I can be ready for it. I can be prepared. Uh, and then when you get, again, this is a spoiler section now, so uh, maybe uh, click away if you don't want to be spoiled, if you plan on playing Three Down Stars, but you get to Moss's section and it drops you into an area that feels um, like it belongs in an actual horror game. You know, all of a sudden you're not uh, in the standard town area in broad daylight and you're somewhere quite claustrophobic and because the player has been conditioned at this point for hours upon hours and hours what to expect uh, when something happens in, in, in the mine section uh, I enjoy getting messages from people and having people tell me that they were very uh, shocked when they got to the mine section and something happened and then all of a sudden there's uh, r really uh, exciting horror elements that happen, and I, I, it was a lot of fun for me, and it was very difficult for make for me to make a design decision like that because I'm hyper aware of what people want in a horror game, and I'm I'm hyper aware of what is interesting in terms of marketing because I myself am a huge horror fan, especially when it comes to horror games. I absolutely love horror games. I want to see the monsters. I want to see the weird, cool concepts. And I knew that I didn't want to do that with Silver Falls. I wanted something that was more understated because I want to bring something different to the table. I didn't want Silver Falls to be just another horror uh, series that's sort of chasing the coattails of, of these incredible series that came before. I wanted to create something that stands on its own and, and is interesting in its own way and wasn't just copying other things. And I knew that was going to be a very tough sell in terms of marketing because that meant on our marketing, I couldn't just say, we've got tons of monsters now, or look at this cool thing, you've never seen a weird thing like this before. I knew I wasn't going to have that benefit, and I was going to have to trust the uh, player in staying interested in terms of the story, the atmosphere, and the environments. And uh, I, I'm so appreciative that people enjoyed the game, and it was uh, exciting for them, and that there is a payoff, because you get to Moss's section, and... Uh, I think it is quite shocking uh, when when uh, you get an encounter that you're not expecting. Uh, and I think at that point, because I built up to it, um, I wanted to give the player the sense that, uh-oh, I don't really know what to expect anymore, uh, and I don't know what can happen now. And that escalates from there when you play uh, Holt's section, and then Holt has to go to the steel mill, and then that's when there's been foreshadowing and buildup. It doesn't suddenly happen. If you've been exploring and playing the game, nothing is ever handed to you. Nothing's ever forced, um, you know, right in your face. Players who have explored and they've um, read, you know, diary entries that were in one of the, the uh, hotel motel rooms. And there's there's um, a lead up to it. And when you get to the payoff of Holt section, this steel mill, I felt that that was very exciting and it was something that I, I hadn't experienced for myself in a horror game and I thought would give people something uh, exciting that they hadn't expected and an interesting experience. And I again, I did get a lot of messages from that and that was very exciting for me, for people to say, what did you do? Why did you do this? That's uh, And some people have said, you know, I... I had to stop. I had to step away from the steel mill section for a second. And that's very exciting for me in that it was, it made the whole uh, risk of, of that sort of um, section uh, worthwhile, that people enjoyed it. Um, and when I first played uh, Silent Hill, there were sections where I would stop playing for months and I'd say, no, I can't. I'm not doing that. There were, um, when I was much younger and I was playing... Um, Resident Evil, the first Resident Evil on the Sony PlayStation with my uh, sisters, uh, we'd get to certain rooms and we would say, all right, <laughs> we're done. We're done for a couple days. Maybe we'll just leave it there. We don't really want to uh, have to go through that hallway again. And I, I was really hoping that I could uh, create an, an exciting experience for people with Three Down Stars. And, you know, based on the reactions, I, I think I was able to do that. So I'm very excited. And that was my thought process uh, with um, with that. And with Episode Prelude, I wanted things to be just a, a bit more straightforward uh, because it is a shorter experience. I didn't have the benefit of, of all that extra time that I had with um, 
three down stars because episode prelude is supposed to be a very short sweet chapter it tells a standalone story that stands on its own uh it has a very tight structure to a beginning middle and end uh and uh the horror element um is more in the build-up and the tension of of okay what's going what's going on here and i didn't i'm not big into jump scares um so for people who have played three down stars and uh, an episode prelude i'm not there's nothing where there's a, a big oh no I'm, I'm i'm camera zooming in and i'm looking at this thing and then all of a sudden it gets quiet and then there's a loud noise and things pop out i'm not a big fan of that i don't find that scary at all um i i think it's a a little bit annoying because uh instead of thinking of creative ways to do it a writer or a creator or a developer will rely on that and it's just an automatic response it can be extremely effective it is useful to use um if you're if you're um put in effort and you put in thought into how you use that it's very effective but me personally i don't really like that and the scares that come from silver falls i wanted them to be organic that don't occur necessarily in a scripted way uh and they happen when you don't really expect something scary to happen and the game leads you into thinking that you understand what's going to come next and then it pulls the rug from under you and then something uh much much worse happens when the game had just spent hours uh uh sort of explaining to you look this is what you can expect so uh, you can be ready and um with episode prelude i didn't have that uh time uh and so when you do get uh the again there's spoilers here so be careful i'll give you a couple seconds to click away five four three two one ten nine eight seven uh the creature that shows up on the roof uh, of the house and that's actually something that we created uh during a live stream uh, and people were able to chat and hang out while we actually sculpted that and then we modeled it and we put the texture on that guy and we rigged him up and animated him um that sort of weird three-legged creature um i think what's fun about that is the that's the first enemy that you encounter in episode prelude and there isn't a lead up it it just happens um, and the game doesn't even say, look, here are some, like, small basic monsters that you can expect. Uh, and there are the entries, the journal entries, the pages that are sort of scattered, the guy that's sort of um, stuck in his house and he's not sure he thinks he hears things that are out. Um, and again, in terms of um, just written storytelling, the game sort of leads you into thinking it's probably some kind of animal. And then he thinks he sees some sort of creature in the corner of his room. So the, the game... Uh, is designed to sort of leave it to where the player gets to fill in the blanks in their minds like what oh man what what could possibly be this thing that this guy is scared of and without any sort of hint all of a sudden it's sort of like oh here's a boss battle uh and i wanted to create creatures that almost recognize something but aren't necessarily based on something that exists like i don't want to say oh it's a dog but three legs oh, it's a horse, but it has uh, tentacles coming out of its mouth. I want something that's recognizable from a distance and that you think you know what it is, and when you get close to it, you realize, ew, that's not what I thought that thing was at all. And that's always my approach with Silver Falls creatures. Um, I always uh, enjoy when people message or they comment and they say, oh, man, look at this monster. I got a good screen cap of it, you know, and they'll post a screenshot and they'll say, geez, look at this thing. And, uh, I enjoy that, you know, um, because I, again, I'm a, I'm a monster fan. I love the monster movies. I love the thing. Um, and I love the, all the weird stuff you, you see in Silent Hill and Resident Evil. Um, and I'm, I'm always wary when I create my creatures to think, okay, I, I need to make sure I don't approach it in the same way the developers for Resident Evil's approach it. And I absolutely need to make sure I don't approach it the same way that, you know, uh, Silent Hill would approach their monsters. And that's sort of my my philosophy on that is you think you recognize it from a distance and you get up close and it's just not right. You know, there's there's something real wrong with it. And there are lore uh, reasons and explanations for uh, each creature. So I write, you know, what, why does this exist? And then I uh, never take that and put it in the game. I just have that in my back pocket. Um, because if once you start explaining things, 
And once you start putting names on things, it becomes easy for people to understand. And when people understand something, it's not necessarily um, threatening or scary to a certain extent. For example, um, I think something that Resident Evil does to work against itself is it very clearly labels all of its monsters, gives them names. And once you put a name on something, it becomes a lot easier for people to understand. And so that's something I avoid. There's never really official names for the creatures in the Silver Falls games. Um, and the characters will never are never blasé like, oh yeah, that's a, a handsy fella, you know, or whatever it is. And really, they kind of just agree on, on you know, some characters may agree on a couple nicknames. The only real official um, uh, names of creatures are the ones where they're in the title of the game. So say, for example, Silver Falls Undertakers. For the 3ds that's a name of the creature and the 